is Hazrat Hudayfa radiyallahu anhu may Allah be pleased with him and the subject and the meaning of the hadith is as follows he stated that I heard from the gracious Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sami'atu ya Rasulullah sami'atu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that the holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that there will come an age an era a time in which the fitnas, the fitna, the discord, the disharmony, with such speed they will come on top of it, one after the other, one after the other, one after the other, with such speed. Fitna, ignorance, one on the top of the other, after one, one after the other, one after the other. With such speed it will come the fitna, facade. It's a unique example the Holy Prophet, the Prophet of Allah has given that. Just like the straw mat, you know the straw, straw mat is joined with the strands. Just like the strands are joined and twisted over each other, joined together. In the same, such speed that joined together the fitnas, twisted one over the other. There won't be even a gap between the fitnas. Not even a gap, twisted and intertwined. Linked, connected with speed. One's gone, one's come, next one's come, next one's come. With speed they will come one after the other. Fitnas. Issues. Then he also said that the fitnas that will come, the issues that will arise, there will be a heart that will, attest, that will accept them. When that heart will accept those fitnas, then a black dot, a black stain will appear. Imam al is stating this. It's not some minor statement, it's a hadith. Very big message this is. What will happen? Is that insan's heart, it will receive that fitna, that darkness, that ignorance. And when it receives it, then a black stain will appear on that heart. A black stain. And there will also be a heart, another t- heart, that that fitna, that ignorance, it will not accept that fitna. It will, it didn't say reject, but it won't accept. So look at the word accept, to absorb something, accept something, beautiful word. That it will be so much, uh, you could say, preparation or improvement of that heart. It will have the capability the capacity in that heart, he'll have the capacity that he will not accept it. One, the heart that will absorb it, 
accept it and one that won't accept it. So for example, like you have an earth that is very thirsty, dry. If you put water onto that earth, then it's got the ability that it will suck in that water, drawing that one. There's another piece of land which is already wet and it's clogged with the water. If you put water on it, then it'll take time to absorb that water. So it has less ca- capacity, capacity, absorption, ability. So that heart, it will have the ability that it will bring in that fitna, bring in that fitna, absorb it. May Allah Ta'ala forgive. And there will be another heart that he won't have any capacity that he can accept it. Won't accept it, that fitna. So what will happen then? By not accepting that fitna on that heart, a white glowing stain will come. Not stain, but white glowing mark. Allah's Nabi Sallallahu gave the example of this. They will be so shining and white, like a beautiful piece of, a, of the jewel, of the, of the precious jewel stone. Then the hadith says. So now two types of hearts. Say subhanallah. How many? Two types of heart. One is that heart which tries to gather up and smother up the wrong. It'll have the ability to do that, the capacity to do that. It will pull on those. It will, it will absorb those. The second heart will be the heart that won't accept the fitnas. It won't like the fitnas. It won't absorb the fitnas. It won't take the fitnas. Then Allah Nabi Wasallam said that that heart which accepts the fitna and takes the fitna, that will be a different heart to that heart which didn't accept. What's the difference? That that heart which does not accept the fitnas, which is equivalent to that white shining rock, stone, then its heart will be such, its condition will be such, that until that heart is in the dunya, no fitna will ex- uh, affect the heart. What a brilliant piece of news, good news. Mubashiran wa nadira. Isn't it? So the Prophet ﷺ gave the good news, both things some of the hadith, the good news and also the warning has come as well. The admonishment has come. The warning has come. So this was the Prophet ﷺ's glory and status. Mubashiran wa nadira. How he explained to the Ummah Allah's Nabi. Subhanallah. That just like that, that stone, that rock, like the shining white stone rock, it's in the dunya. But whilst it's in the dunya, no fitna will come. The jali fitna will come. This fitna, X, Y, Z, nothing will affect that heart that rejects and doesn't accept the fitna. It's protected. The other heart that will accept the fitna, the discord, the issues, the ignorance, but has the ability to accept it and, and does accept it then it will flip upside down. You understand? Like a vessel that suddenly is tossed upside down and then it will be black, dark. It will will be flipped upside down. And against that, what will it do? The heart, that any good thing it will not accept. Just like a vessel that's upside down, you can't put water in it. And this is the example that our Holy Prophet ﷺ gave. That if you turn the glass upside down, you can fill the tap, put the tap on very full, in a full manner, but the liquid will not go into the vessel, it will leak. So just like you can speak about goodness, it will keep passing that vessel, going around it, but it won't go inside the vessel, it won't accept it at all, the goodness. It will just leak and, and go around, but it won't go inside the vessel. And what will happen is that due to the vessel being upside down, due to the heart being upside down, what will happen then? is that all sorts of all sorts of manners and adab will end. He won't be able to differentiate between good and bad. In other words, it will become a fountain of desires. The center, focal point of desires, full of desires, desires of the dunya. Won't know about haram, won't know about halal, won't know about unlawful or lawful, won't know about good, won't know about bad, won't know about deen. Everything will consider as deen, will consider deen in an incorrect manner, wherever it will be, that it will have no sense of good and bad, of the right or the wrong, that it can differentiate. Very big hadith, my friends, very big hadith. Very great hadith. Okay, now let's think about this, speak about this. So the first 
statement that we told in the city that there will be an era, a generation, and the signs were given of that generation. Is it that generation that we're living in? Say, Subhanallah. Subhanallah. We need to accept the facts, brothers. We're discussing, we're, we're discussing and speaking to each other. It's not a, a, a speech. It's not a speech, is it? A lecture. We're just discussing what era will come. Is this not the era of a prophet? Rather, the Holy Prophet said that as the time goes further away from me, then there will be more darkness, more intense darkness. And we can see now. We can see this now. The fitnas are such around us. The issues are such around us. They're stuck together. So many. The fitnas that Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi mentioned, they're all present at this moment in time. Immodesty fitna. Um, you name it. Any fitna, any wrong action, vice, evil, you will see them around us. The previous nations, they were divided. That there was a defect in a certain nation, a defect in a, in a certain group of people. Somebody used to wail, somebody used to do wrong. But this era we're in now, this generation, all of the wrongs and the bad things have been collected together in one time. The previous nations that came and went, they had separate issues, separate problems. And each uh, wrong and evil used to earn punishment. If we imagine now, this era, all the wrongs are together in one generation. Previous eras, the evil and the sins were restrained, restricted to the earth itself, the earth. It's crushed. And even then punishments will come. You read the Quran. Even then big, big adab would come. Allah Ta'ala would turn the land upside down. Zalzala would come. Earthquakes would come. Typhoons would come. Yes, hurricanes would come. For one sin. Now we have all the sins together. Not just together. They've just gone above the uh, earth. The earth. The surface, they've gone into the heavens and the skies. The dirty things, the dirty actions are not just retreated to the earth's crust. 35,000 feet above the, the ground where the plane is flying, we have sin and vice taking place. So we have even made the skies the witness. We've made the oceans a witness. We've made the seas a witness in this era that Allah Ta'ala has set, uh, created us and given us the life. We are witnessing this. This is the era we're living in now. So this is the reason that today in this day and age we are living. But this day and age the Muslim, his darajat at the same time will be great. Yes, look at the good news for the Muslim of this day and age. Great status of that person. Great rank for that person. So this is, these are the conditions that are around us. And it seems, it's very clear that the era we're living in now, this generation, this day and age is the day and age of fitna. Yes, look all four sides around us. There's nothing else we can see. And just like Rasulullah said, that they are twisted and intertwined together. One finishes, the next, the mind, the thoughts keep on wandering. What is there right now that has not been released and is not apparent, that always invites a person towards sin? Tell me. What is it now? Traveling, sitting, go shopping, go out, go here, go there. At any time, go to any portion of the earth, of the world, any land, you go from your home to the masjid, thousands of fitnas you will experience and observe. Those fitnas for which Allah Ta'ala said, I turned nations upside down, the previous nations, the land upside down, the earth upside down. Is this not the case? So what's the reason for the fitnas, the discord, the disharmony, the ignorance, the, the issues around us? The fitna is created, there's a big reason for this. And the that uh, those people who will be attracted to the fitnas, for what reason? Why? It was that gone, those people, those nations, who leave the education and teachings of their Nabi. The, the spirit of the deen, the soul of the deen, which is real ibadah, real worship, the real worship, without which there is no worship accepted. Rather, I stated, that if that action is not there, then even ibadah, worship becomes fitna. If the teaching of the Nabi is not there. Do you understand my statement? Remember my statement. That if we don't have that, then even ibadah, worship is fitna. It doesn't matter what type of ibadah it is, worship, even that is fitna. Even that is fitna. 
We call it ibadah, define it as ibadah. But the soul of ibadah is not inside it, due to which that ibadah, that it gives it the definition of ibadah. If the soul is not present, and what is the soul of our ibadah? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's ittaba, his imitation and his sunnah. That is the soul and the spirit of ibadah. So the fitnas that we created most of all in this ummah, there's another hadith. Abdullah bin Umar radiyallahu anhu, he presented this hadith that we were on a journey. We were on a journey and we stopped in one place, location. We saw that some people are doing wudu for salah and some were preparing, some were preparing for this. Different preparations the noble companions were doing. And he said that I saw that the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he prepared to give khutbah. And the khutbah started there. The sermon speech, he said, I got close to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa this sahabi saying, this hadith. He said, I went, I drew closer to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa When I got closer, I heard that khutbah, another sahaba came. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said that the nabis that came before me, the prophets, and every prophet that came, he had one purpose, that he would explain to his ummah the good things, the better things, so that his ummah nation do the better actions. And the dirty things, the wrong actions, he would make them afraid of those dirty and wrong things, so that his people would be safe from that. So, the Sahaba Akram, the Sahaba said, the Prophet said that such a time will come, then he spoke again about fitna, sallallahu alayhi wa This is another hadith. This is the second hadith. The fitnas will come one after the other. One will finish, the next one will come. One will finish, won't even finish, the next one will come. Before the next one finishes, the next one will come. And the person who doesn't protect himself from the fitnas, from the issues, then they will be going towards hell. This is the hadith, continuing. So both hadith, what's been explained to us, taught to us about fitna, the problems, the issues around us, the reason for the fitness is that the education, the lessons, the teaching of the Nabi will be rejected, will be shunned. Our whole deen, Islam, the ruh, the soul of our deen, of our whole religion is just one thing. What is that? What is it? Sunnat Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's it, nothing else. Nothing else. We have one high grade objective. Look, there are two types of humans. Humans are distributed into two parts. Do you understand what I'm saying up to now? The human being, Allah Ta'ala, is distributed into two parts, sectors. And the Quran addresses to one of those who are believers and those, secondly, who don't believe. Who don't believe. Mankind are split into two. Those who believe and those who don't believe. And the, those who believe, when Allah addresses them, when Allah explains and speaks about their goodness, about their salvation, when the Quran mentions their forgiveness and salvation and success. And when the Quran, when Allah Ta'ala speaks about Jannah and turns the direction of the believers towards Jannah, then at that time only one thing Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, for that you only have one action to achieve this success. One condition. What is that? What is our action? Our condition? Allah says, you have to please me. You have to please me. Our body, our lives, physically in this world, we are eating, drinking, everything. We have no other action. Unless you only have one mission, that you need to attain the nearness and irfan and marif of your Rabb. That's your mission as a human being. That's your mission. Soul. Just one duty you've been given Allah says. One duty. A human being. And for that, just, just, just. There's nothing necessary to do anything else. The Quran is inviting towards it. That Allah says, you must please me, O believer. You need to try your best on planet earth to get my nearness, to please me, to get closer to me. And the hereafter will end on this point as well. The conclusion, radiyatam maradiyya. Yes, that your death will be beautiful when I am happy with you, Allah says, and you'll be happy with me. That's the beautiful death. That's our end. That's our goal. And who desires and tries and makes effort for this goal, this and tell me. Are we learning ilam, we making khanqas, giving durus, giving speeches, doing tabligh, giving education for us to do dhikr adhkar, to go to the shaykh. All of these actions have only just one objective, all of them. Just one objective, one purpose behind all of these actions. What is that? To please our Rabb, our Creator. Isn't this the case? Yes. 
Someone's becoming a scholar, someone's teaching hadith, someone's reading hadith, someone's studying hadith, someone's going. The objective, if we go away from the objective, we will lose out. Always that person drowns who goes away from his purpose and mission. Whenever you go towards deen and you try to attain success in the deen through ilm, through knowledge, through tasawwuf, or through purification, then your near should be only one, otherwise you'll be deviated. It's the biggest fit that you'll be deviated. You just have one niya that this action that I'm about to do and undertake, I'm only doing for one reason, to please my Rabb, my Lord, my Creator. Whoever just slightly contaminates this purpose, even his width or weight, he cannot be a successful person. Then he is drowned into his desires. First of all, this is the action that we have this objective. We have no other objective in this world. Our body physically in the world is for this one purpose that we need to depart this world with Allah's rada. Whoever leaves this world with Allah's pleasure, he is successful. And when you go away from that purpose and mission, then that becomes temporary, material world, a life of desires, dunya comes into that person, and all material things and lust, all lifelong, his effort, his hard work, his bodily movements, he's just throwing water over everything. Yes, so a person goes towards Tazkiyah, he learns dhikr, afkar, he does everything, but his niya changes, and instead of Allah, comes earning dunya. And hundred thousand tasbih, hundred thousand dhikr, hundred thousand mujadat, he throws the water of all of that. Goes to Darul Ulum, ten years he studies hadith, studies everything he does. He learns ilm, knowledge. By his objective, he turns away from the objective. And dunya, worldly, material things come, then the color changes and he finishes off that effort and throws water over it. So the value of any action to Allah, as Allah says that the objective I've sent you for, for that objective you should do your actions, your focal point and objective should always be the same thing. Say subhanallah. Subhanallah. We, when we don't even move away the slightest from our objective, we are destroyed at that time. We'll be finished. So control this always. Do you understand what I'm saying? So we need to control this. Never let any other intention come into your... Because remember, nafs and shaitan are always with us. Nafs, desires and shaitan are always with us. And they will never let us succeed. Nafs and shaitan always want to change our intention, to change our direction. That don't let this man continue in the direction to Allah. What is riya? What is taqabbur? What is pretense? Why is it that qaris have taqabbur? Why do scholars have taqabbur? Why do people who have knowledge have taqabbur? The more that person's doing the work and has the status and deen, the more shaitan and nafs will deviate that person and mix him into desires and run him into dunya or put him stuck in other issues and it will finish that person internally and make him run after the dunya and material things. And one statement will come out from the mouth, I want deen and I want dunya, I want both, I want the best of both worlds. Commonly people say this, one brother, just met him recently. And he said, I want deen and I want dunya. I want the world and I want the hereafter. I said, brother, dunya is not there. There's nothing in the dunya. There's nothing. Dunya is empty. It's nothing. The real objective is deen. When the deen comes in your life, the dunya automatically will come. Subhanallah. These are not two separate things. Don't try to separate them. Rasulullah's great, beautiful dua, the ulama, my deen, better my deen, so that I can protect my dunya as well. Subhanallah, this is a dua, masura of Rasulullah So whoever tries to correct his dunya, control his dunya, is very simple method. Make your deen strong. Make your deen strong. And immediately your dunya will fall into place. You'll have enjoyment in this dunya. What do we do? We want to put the deen aside to the back and run after the dunya. Then you don't have deen left at all and you don't have dunya at all either. You don't have any of them. So deen, stick to the deen. Stick to the deen, earn the deen, grab hold of the deen, and dunya will automatically come to you what, what is necessary. You'll see this, there's not one example, there are thousands of people who have passed in the history, great darajat, awliya Allah, who we give them the title. Rather, they don't even earn themselves and they feed the dunya. All of the dunya, they eat the langar in the khankas, they eat the food that they prepare for them, do they not feed them? Don't they feed them? They don't earn themselves, but they feed the people of the dunya. Yeah, this is an achievement as well of our Hazrat Sahib. Hazrat Sahib's Khan come the Thursday night, Juma, night of Juma, when there was a majlis. Then Hazrat Sahib, there was poverty, hunger at home. 
Nothing. No resources. And they used to sit on their jainamas, they used to put their hand under their prayer mat. Hazrat Sahib, my shaykh, and he'd call out, Shah Sahib, guests have come. Have any guests come? He said, yes, Hazrat Sahib, three guests have come. He said, oh, come, uh, just get some rotis, uh, bread for them. And he'd take the money out from beneath his prayer mat. The money would continue to come out. And he'd go and take this money and feed them. And with the yogurt, he didn't, Hazrat didn't even have the, the strength to have the bread and eat with the yogurt. But he didn't earn himself, but he'd feed the people. Mm, this is what we need to look at. What's the reason for it? One reason. Because they made their deen strong. Whoever makes his deen strong, then spiritual food arrives to that person. The stomach always is full for that person. Never does he get stomach ache. He never has indigestion. The individual, he doesn't need to eat, uh, you know, uh, these tablets and capsules, the stomach's upset, etc. No. Never. Never, he doesn't even know whether the tablet is going to an invitation. What do we do? Oh, I'm going to a feast today and I've got to have the tablet after so I don't burp or have gastro problems. We're doing that nowadays. So my colleagues, this is the biggest fitna today. Because when does the fitna originate and arise? Why are there more fitnas in this day and age today? What a great hint and direction this hadith has given us. In this day and age, why are there more fitnas in darkness? The Prophet said that there will come a time when there will be more fitnas, one upon the other. Why are there more fitnas now? Because we have left and shunned the sunnah of Rasulullah where the sunnah is finished, the fitnas will arise and take birth there, originate there. Just like I said to you, that when fitna originates, it was for that reason, because the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Sunnah, his lifestyle was shunned, rejected, and left. And today, my brothers, is such that, what is Sunnah today? What is Sunnah today? We have no connection with the Sunnah nowadays. We say there's no connection with our deen. We don't even think Sunnah is deen. Then what else is fitna tell me? And if someone talks about fitna today, then people think he's stupid. They think he's a backward fundamentalist. Don't know what is or what titles we draw out of the ground for that person. Yes, and the, the people, the red people, strange people, they say that anyway, but our own people say this to him. They don't even want to meet the person who follows Sunnah. Maybe one in a hundred, if he does like the person who follows Sunnah, then he gets the criticism. Are you a Muslim? You think you're the Muslim today? You're the only one who thinks you're the Muslim? We're not Muslim. And everyone else is stupid in the dunya today. And you think you're the only Muslim, they say to him. Everyone else is stupid. Everyone else is full of sin. You think you're Akalman, and you think you've got the intellect, and you think you're the lover of the Islam, they say to him. The reason for this fitna is this. This is the reason that we have shunned the sunnah. We have discarded the sunnah. And rejection of the sunnah has caused the azab for us today. Remember this. Listen carefully to what I'm saying to you. I'm explaining this hadith in a nice manner, inshallah. I didn't prepare that I'm not a hadith uh, scholar. I just looked at these glances. I looked at the kitab whilst I come here, before I come so I can share the hadith with you. And the rest of the words are my shaykh's words, subhanallah, that I just discussed with you. With Allah's fadl, with Allah, Hazrat Sahib's karam, then that from the hadith, all the meaning comes up because I had the sobat, the connection of wali Allah. When you have the sobat of wali Allah, you'll understand everything. Everything. So the first point, fitna. Uh, fitna, why is the fitna originate? For this reason, because the Holy Prophet ﷺ sunnah, we are discarding it, rejecting it. So today we are in that day and age that our sunnahs, following the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ is finished. So the question doesn't arise that fitna doesn't come to this day and age, this era. That's the reason why today there are fitnas. And what sort of fitnas? Because that one fitna after the other, after the other, the Prophet ﷺ says it to the sahaba. Raining down upon each other. And he explained what would be the condition at that time. That like an upside down vessel the human being will be. No goodness can go into him. Sometimes he'll pray, sometimes he'll leave salah, sometimes he'll drink alcohol, sometimes he'll start swearing. Sometimes he'll be uh, following Islam. When Ramadan comes, he's pious, becomes good and upright. You know, just like you have uh, something that just keeps changing color and form. He'll no, have no basis of life. He'll have no deen. It will be just total exclusion. He'll have his own Quran, his own tafsir, his own commentary, his own understanding. Everything will be his own choice. Tell me, how many people today, here, me if I start to count, I think 99% people you can see like this. Every man is intellectual. 
Every man has a brain. Everyone says he has wisdom. Such tafsir, such commentary, such words and dogs, Allah Akbar, such a deen. Why? Because we see this around us. We see myself, we have the phones, we have TVs, we have muzakarat and debates, how people sit down and present deen, their opinion, someone saying bad about this hadith, looking down this hadith. A jeeb storm of opinion has wrapped itself around the dunya today, in regards to Islam. So brothers, fikr, we must have concerned. We want to go to heaven or do we want to go to hell? Tell me. Think from this hadith. Consider. There's a path Allah's Nabi Sallallahu has given to us in this hadith. A solution. We see a solution, a way out from this hadith. Uh, we have a protection that Allah's Nabi Sallallahu a beautiful protection is given to us. Yes, and the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said here, Nothing to be worried about. Nothing to fight about. You can be a person who solidly in this day and age follows the sunnah. Adheres to the sunnah. In this day and age you can become a person who properly follows and adheres to the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. And a solution, a way to do this. So let's come back to this hadith and I'll show you what is that path that's been defined in this hadith. Will you practice on it? True promise? Yes, that's why we're working hard sitting together here to understand this today. This is your love that I'm talking, otherwise how can I have the strength to speak? That's why those people who want to hear are sitting, then the one who's speaking automatically continues. When those who are listening want to sleep, then the one who's speaking sleeps before them. So, mashallah, you looks like you are all people who want to listen and understand. That's why we say Sunni, Sunni. Mashallah. Yeah, unique names. We're all Sunni, mashallah. People who listen. Sunni. Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in this hadith has stated fitnas will come, vice will come, issues will come, negatives will come. Where will they drop? On the earth. They will drop onto the earth. They will drop onto the skies. We're reading this hadith that the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has explained to us. Where will they drop? Into the oceans. The storms will come, serpents will come, will they? Is that the fitna? No, the Prophet said the fitna will come, definitely will come, they'll be joined together. And where will they go? Into the hearts of the people they will drop the fitnas. No other place will the fitna arrive to, say subhanAllah. These fitnas, the vice, the negatives, they'll have no living abode place. It will be the qulub insan, in the, these fitnas will enter and penetrate the hearts of the people, human beings. No other place will they drop down. They won't drop onto the houses. They won't drop or destroy anything else. The fitnas. Yes, they won't touch anything. If they destroy, effect it will be the heart of the human being that will be destroyed by the fitnas. The heart of the human being. So two hearts will be changed. One will be the beautiful heart which will reject the fitna and the second will be the one that will become black and dark. Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the beautiful heart which will be like the shining white rock, then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, good news, that the heart will be in the dunya, but as long as it's there, no fitna will affect that heart. Isn't it? That's the case. And the heart that accepts the fitnas, the vice will be like the vessel upside down from all corners, desires, his life will be a amount of desires, deen, whatever, money, material, dunya, money, material, dunya, counting, dunya, counting, money, dunya, 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 world, 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 finish, end of story, no other action, no other desire. So what is now the here, the direction we're giving this hadith? Do you understand up to now? So mean you do want to be saved? What's the meaning, the message of this hadith? Allah's Nabi Sallallahu wants to save us, that be saved from these fitnas, from this emotion, from this condition. Save yourself, and you can save yourself. How? If you make your heart, then you'll be saved. If you can make your heart, you'll be saved. Do you understand this point I've said? Has the penny dropped in the mind? Towards the heart, Allah's Nabi Sallallahu is giving a clear direction. In that day and age, only one action you need to do. Don't be afraid of the fitnas. Protect your heart first and foremost. Whichever man, whichever human being, to save himself from fitna, you don't need to erect a tent, you don't need to make a barrier wall so the fitna doesn't come into my house, or some scientific solution, the fitnas, we can stop it. No, no, no. There's that you won't even know the fitnas, how they come and penetrate into the heart. You won't even realize. You won't even realize. You'll be sleeping fine after praying salah when you wake up in the morning. Your heart will have disappeared. 
It's in a hadith that in the morning person a believer, in the morning disbeliever, in the morning disbeliever, by the evening a believer. But the Prophet said, those whose hearts are good, who have conditioned their heart, protected their heart, controlled their heart, on those the fitnas will impact them. They will be staying in the dunya until they live in the dunya, their hearts will be sparkling, shining. Subhanallah. Say, Subhanallah. So what a great warning, explanation. So we, us people, what's our situation? What's our situation? Does anyone understand this advice in this hadith? In this day and age, how we should save ourselves? How do we protect ourselves? Which ibadah is most necessary today? In this era of fitness, is this not the era of fitness? Will you accept yes or no that we are in the day and age of fitness? We're not blind, are we? We can see everything around us. Can't we? This is the era, the, the worst era regards to fitna. Whose hearts are good and correct, who's saved from the fitnas and who is not saved from fitnas. Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam clearly, only that man can be saved who with dhikr of Allah makes his heart protected and saved. Subhanallah. Dhikrullah. Why do we do dhikrullah? Why do we remember Allah? All the other actions that are running. All the other actions that are running at the moment in life. They will not save you from the fitna. Rather, those actions themselves will become fitna. But the person, those individuals who do dhikrullah, I'm telling you this. Explanation from this deed. Those individuals who do dhikrullah, they will be saved from these fitnas because they will have protected their hearts. There's only one solution until qiyamah that can protect the hearts of the human beings. What is that? Dhikrullah. Remembrance of Allah. I'm not saying this. Quran is saying this. Quran is saying, all of you respected scholars are sitting here with the understanding, you know this. Quran is telling us this. Why? Because Allah Ta'ala, why is Allah said kathir with regards to dhikr? Abundance. Why is Allah made dhikr kathir, do high quantity? Whenever the name dhikr comes, Allah says kathir, kathir, kathir. Why with regards to dhikr is Allah said kathir? High quantity, abundance. The reason for this is this, that there's goodness for the human being through dhikr. If we remember Allah Ta'ala, there's no benefit Allah gets from our dhikr. Allah doesn't benefit from our dhikr. From our remembrance, Allah says that dhikr will protect your hearts and those whose hearts are protected, saved, remember this. Then there's a clear sign of that person that he won't just be saved from fitna. What is fitna? That they will be those who implement the sunnah of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Why is one sign that their life, their basis of their life, the measurement of their life, the success of their life will be the sunnah. Their whole life, the basis will change. Their lifestyle will change. That they're walking, talking, standing, sitting, eating. Everything will be based that what is the sunnah way him? What is the sunnah of the Holy Prophet And whoever has this basis of life that it should be for every mu'min, Allah's Nabi Wasallam is telling us himself that I'm an example, I'm an example. And the example is he that his every atom and particle you implement and you imitate. What does it mean of example? That everything... Step by step, you will do naqal and imitate that example. The Prophet ﷺ said, I'm a namoon, I'm an example. Nothing in your life should be such that you are doing without imitating me. I'm your role model. Nothing in your life should be such that you are doing any action in life, A to Z, without imitating me. Ibadah, worship, eating, society, akhlaq, good manners, conduct. Everything in your life, A to Z, in that there should be, I am your role model, I am the example, I should be the person you follow and imitate. What's that example here? What's the example of a role model? Now look here, those people whose hearts are open, expanded with the dhikr of Allah. One uh, girl, I am surprised, maybe some people are listening, this name, not here, in another country I'll speak about, another country. A girl, phone, phone call came. Mother and father, parents. Many phone calls, I said, what's the issue? What's the problem repeatedly calling here? What was the problem? They said, we are upset, severely distressed. I said, what's the distress? And they've got a connection with me, meaning the spiritual connection, dhikr, etc. They said that you are sheikh, we want to do mashra with you. I said, what's the mashra you want to do with me? What? They said, our daughter, our daughter at home, she has given us a hard time. I said, what's the hard time she's given? They, that you are listening with me, maybe you're definitely listening to what I'm saying. I'll ask for forgiveness, but I'm just giving an example for taqwa. For strength of Iman. So we have to explain these points sometimes so that people around us, that taqwa increases. There are people like this present. The reason for this is that they have made their hearts. They have made their hearts. 
And after making the heart the first thing that comes into a person's life, and the biggest fitna, a person saved from the biggest fitna is what? To leave the sunnah of Rasulullah s.a.w. That's the biggest fitna. The biggest fitna is to leave the sunnah. After that, all other fitnas arise in life. All other fitnas arise. So I said, what's the problem? They said that, the daughter said, that I want to get married. And she's a young girl. She said, there's one condition, I'll get married. One condition. And then the parents said, what's the condition? She said, I don't want to take the jahaz, the dowry, she said. She said, why? Because this is a tradition. It's against the Prophet ﷺ, sunnah. She understood that. She said what she understood in the deen. So you tell her, my, if you want to accept my rishta, my, my proposal in marriage, then I don't want the dowry. Just then they're saying that in our area there's a custom or a tradition that if we don't give jahaz, the dowry, there'll be a loss. What will people say? What will they say? What will happen to the girl after marriage? She said, I'll accept everything and you can take me out of the house now, but I will not give, we will not accept the dowry. Give the dowry because it's against the sunnah. And I don't want to do any action against the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, she said. So younger, younger. So where did this understanding awareness come from? The big, big so-called people, they don't have this awareness. What's the reason? Because the so-called people hadn't made their heart. And that young girl, she had made the heart, she's safe from the fitna. What a big fitna she's safe from. Big issue she saved from. Imagine the Holy Prophet ﷺ, while he was in the world, he said that no fitna will affect that person. And our mother and father, if they have a, a child, a daughter like this, then the whole village, her noor is spread in a town. So this happens sometimes. It occurs sometimes, remember. This hadith, I remember. Another event, I also remember. Subhanallah. Sometimes it occurs like this. That in a desert, Allah Ta'ala allows the flowers to be embedded and planted. Just listen to the hadith, so I can explain this more in detail to you. From this hadith, remember this hadith. Today, mashallah, we've got a lot of time, so let's speak a lot, mashallah. Let's speak more. So this is the second ishtama we're having now, isn't it? This is also ishtama, the first ishtama that we did. There were people in front of me. Today's ijtama, people are all present, but they're not in front of me, mashallah. They're not here. There may be more people in, that, in this gathering today. But it's not less. Before there were people, but now we have more angels, mashallah. More angels. The people of dhikr, the gathering is never low in quantity. And there'll be food as well. Before you made the food, now the angels will feed you the food of Jannah. They'll give you Jannah food. It's hadith. This is hadith. Subhanallah. So this is the just this is the majlis, the gathering of rejoicing and enjoyment. Enjoyment and rejoicing is this majlis. What was I saying? Sometimes this occurs that in this dunya of fitna, Allah Ta'ala allows a flower to grow, that a girl is spreading the deen in a whole, whole town and city. She said, I want to become an example. She said. So what should I say here to that daughter? They said, explain to her our daughter. I said, What should I say to her? Allah Ta'ala has explained to her already? What shall I explain to her? I said, What can I say to her? That you, she will explain to you now, I said, rather, the daughter, she will explain to you. So it's not the case that Allah, Allah's deen will not stop, that the sunnah of the Prophet will be left behind until Qiyamah will continue, alhamdulillah. Why don't we become like this as well? The our names include as well, that we revive the sunnah as well. Have courage, determination in this day and age, in this desert, become a flower. Become a flower of the desert. It's a hadith, isn't it? That... In the era of fitna, in the day and age of fitna, the, in the day and age of ignorance and laziness, in the day and age of ignorance and, and, and laziness, the person, the person who does dhikr in that era, the Holy Prophet ﷺ gave the example, beautiful examples that the Prophet of Allah ﷺ gave. He said the example of a person in the desert drought era with a totally dry jungle barren land and you have a beautiful tree that's growing in that environment. How many trees are coming out now in this era of ignorance? SubhanAllah, in the morning we do dhikr of Allah, in the evening we sit, there's the dhikr of Allah. And the good news from the Holy Prophet that your dhikr will be successful at that time, when people will say that you're crazy and mad in love with dhikr, then consider that your dhikr is accepted due to that, what people say about you. So it's not the people that think you're mad, you're crazy, you just keep doing dhikr all the time. Yar, whenever we see him at the shop, when do you work at shop, you're doing dhikr, at home dhikr, they say everywhere. What sort of doctor is he? When does he go to his clinic, to his work? How is he, uh, how does he have this knowledge, people ask. They think he's mad. And what does Allah say? Ulil al-bab, they are the people of intellect, wisdom. Allah says, they are the people of understanding. You rather are the mad people. That don't you want to see the sign of their success? Allah says on the day of resurrection, see the greatness of those, the dhakirin, who you call mad because they're doing too much dhikr, you say. Say subhanallah. 
What a great example Allah's Nabi Sallallahu has given to us. That as soon, in like for example, the example he gave, that there's a drought, barren land, no leaves, no trees, and there are beautiful trees growing. So in the era, day and age of ignorance, the person who does dhikr is just like that beautiful tree growing in the wilderness, in the desert. Yes, so when you heard this, I'd heard this hadith before, but I'd never seen the tashri, the meaning. But what does this mean? Then listen carefully. Shall I explain to you? Today, in this day and age, we have the sunnah alahi Allah sunnah. I've seen this in my life. This is the third, fourth incident I'm sharing with you. Again, I'm exposing somebody's secret. He'll forgive me, inshallah, but as an example for your learning and strength of iman, I'm sharing this. So, are you getting the enjoyment of the ijtima today or not? Tell me. Huh? Allah's sunnah is that when sin spread out too much, when sin spread out too much in society, within a nation, a people, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, through a human being, Allah shows that punishment of a sin. That this is the punishment. This is the third, fourth incident I've seen in my life. One was I saw the effect of interest. One was I think an example of the punishment for immodesty. And this is of dhikr. Dhikr is greatness. Because dhikr is finished now, isn't it? In this, you know, there's no dhikr in the world today. No dhikr in the world today. It's just a tradition. Oh, dhikr, what's this? Nothing at all. Always oh, just put a tasbih in your hand and walk and say, Subhanallah, I'm going, you think you've done dhikr. Do 12 tasbihs and you think you've done dhikr. No sunnah is left in the world today and no is dhikr left in the world today. So in this day and age, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has presented an example of dhikr that I'm going to share with you, present to you. There was a woman and she became ill, severely ill, suddenly became severely ill, a woman. Totally, she was, you could say, without any energy. She had to go to hospital. This day and age, very serious health issue arose and a little bit of breath was left. She was breathing slightly. And you know in the ICU, the intensive care, serious condition, a person when he's in a serious condition is taken. And so they took, him, took her there. And now, uh, hope you could say, the doctors said medically, they said, they said the days, this many days are left after this many days, she will die. Doctors say this, don't they? They give the expiry date. After that, you'll have seen that they give oxygen. And I consider that this is just a deception. A person's gone, he's departed. Really, when he's on that life support machine, they just give oxygen, so after a few days we'll take it off. Yes, so it's an artificial breath they start to inject into a person. Actually, that person has passed away. But Allah Ta'ala is the one who gives life, so life can come again. So this example, it shows us this. So they put her on the life support machine and on the pipe and the oxygen. Obviously, she had passed away. Allah's glory is such that she was a dhakira, she used to do dhikr, she had given her whole life for dhikrullah, a great dhakira, alhamdulillah, great dhakira, a lot of love she had for dhikrullah, remembrance of Allah. And at that time her hal was such, her condition was such, that you know when our dhikr, when it, because when people did dhikr in front of her, when the dhikr was played in front of her, the recording, her body would shake, practically she had passed away. And they put a mask, face mask on her and they said that this day after this day we'll have to take the machine off and we'll have to take her away. Alhamdulillah, Allah's glory is such that slowly, slowly the life came back into her. And the life strengthened, strengthened, strengthened. She came into the ward, normal ward. She came conscious. And life came back to her. I said to you, medically people are surprised and taken aback. It's not a surprise for us. That life and death comes from Allah from above. No one can be saved from the death and nobody can be given the life. Allah is in control. So she came to life and consciousness. And now, then what she explained, I'll share with you. And she didn't have much strength to speak. She said, I had died. She said, I had died. I had passed away. After passing away, I was taken to paradise. And I'll explain to you the scenes of paradise. Now this is the tashri, the meaning of the deed. I told you that there's a tree where in the, in the barren land. And you, it's like a person who does dhikr of Allah when he's in the ignorance. Then it's like the tree, the lush tree in the wilderness. She said that two things I saw in Jannah, two things I saw in paradise. One is this, then every place I saw the dhikr of Allah everywhere. I said that when something disappears, 
Then Allah makes that common that those people of understanding, then their passion increases and those who are weak, then he starts to follow that practice. But she saw this. She saw this, everything. She said the fourth incident I'm sharing with you here. Fourth incident. So she said that I was in... And I saw everywhere in paradise, in every location, I saw the dhikr of Allah. She says, my shaykh, that she said that I saw Jannah paradise was completely silent. Where Allah Ta'ala took her, said that because there were many places and abodes in Jannah, by her maqam, she said I saw the Jannah was so silent, that there was no one there. Apart from, I saw that every place I saw my shaykh was present. And she must have a shaykh, the poor lady. She must have a teacher. She said, everywhere my shaykh, I saw him. And I heard nothing else anywhere apart from dhikr, from all four directions. There was nothing else there. The next thing I'll tell you, the next thing I'll tell you, that I understood from what she said. She said, there's so beautiful trees that Jannah is beautiful. And it's so beautiful. There's so much beauty that Allah Ta'ala has mentioned. Obviously, everything there is beautiful, she said, in Jannah in paradise. Okay? And here the point we understand now, that Jannah is not barren, is it? It's not empty. Jannah is beautiful itself and the trees of Jannah are beautiful as automatically by nature. So there she says in Jannah, the, all the trees within the trees, in the whole of paradise, all of the trees, one tree I saw was unique and different, separate. So this point I'm telling you now. Maybe you'll understand what I'm saying. She's in the whole of paradise where there were beautiful trees, but there was one tree I saw that was unique and more beautiful and significant. And that was a tree made of like gold, beautiful. And in Jannah there was no tree the beautiful like this, apart from that one tree, she said. Apart from that one tree. And because trees, they're all over the place. So what she's explaining, she was a Dhakira woman. So the Hadith, the Shri, she explained that in the era of ignorance, Elaine is any person who does dhikr of Allah, he's like that tree that is the beautiful tree in paradise. The paradise is already beautiful. And she was shown that in paradise itself, all trees are already beautiful. But this tree was unique itself, was more beautiful because there's only one. What is that? The dhikr of Allah which is made of gold. The tree of dhikr of Allah which is made of gold. Say subhanallah. So Jannah, this was shown to him, paradise. Significant, stood out from everything else. Stood out from everything else. So my brothers, you understand this now. If you think for a few moments, that still now we don't understand what is the Still we shouldn't do the Allah. These hadith at the Shri, Allah's Prophet Wasallam did not hide anything from us. But because we are in the era, day and age of fitna and vice, we don't want to accept anything, just negatives around us. And where there's benefit for us that will give us paradise, where there's benefit for us which will give us paradise, we don't want to accept that. Our desires don't want to accept the goodness to take us to paradise. Never will we try. Never will we make an effort. So Allah's Nabi in this hadith stated that he who's made his heart in this era of fitna, don't be scared of darkness. The jali fitnas will come. Big, big fitnas will come. The mu'min has no need to be scared. The believer has no need to be scared. If you are passing, if you are following the path, if you are following the law of Allah SWT, you have nothing to be scared about. Mu'min, only he should be scared who is a thief. The person who has discarded the sunnah of Rasulullah who has left the orders of Allah, he should be scared. But that individual, human being who follows Allah's accounts, he have no worries about the fitnas around him. No jinn can affect him. No storm can affect him. No ghost can affect him. No destruction can affect him. No earth can accept him. No inner generation can affect him. No country can affect him. No conditions around him can affect him or her. He is a protected individual, that person, whose guarantees Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa has given that as long as there is the dunya, the heart will not be affected. The heart of that believer, that person will not be affected. So what's the message to us today? That if you want to be saved and you want to make your hereafter, and you want to be saved from the fitnas of this dunya, you want to protect your iman, you want to strengthen your iman, otherwise fitnas won't leave you. Tomorrow you won't have the kalama in your life. You won't have that shahada in your life. The utterance of the kalama. Then to get to the point to save yourself, there's only one path solution in this day and age. That protect your heart. He who has protected his heart has protected his worship, has protected his salah, has protected his Quran, has protected his hifth, his memorization, has protected his ilm, his knowledge. That's it. Qalab. 
heart, everything is coming from the heart, everything is based on the heart. And the qalb, the heart, the, nothing can protect the heart apart from one action that Allah Ta'ala has prescribed, Allah has ordered, that only this action can protect your heart and from nothing else at all. Kulu shayin sakalatan sakalatan qalb, bi zikrillah. Subhanallah. That we do this, I do other actions, keep on doing other actions, professions, careers in Islam. But it says the dhikr of Allah is attached to the heart, and dhikr is only given one effect, it shines your heart, it protects you. Only one action protects and shines and makes that glow is the dhikr of Allah, remembrance of Allah. That's why the walis of Allah always with dhikr of Allah are protecting themselves to save themselves. As a Musa alayhi salam, the Prophet of Allah, where did Allah send him? To Fir'aun, to Fir'aun. So it was the biggest fitna of that day and age was Fir'aun. And Allah sending His Prophet there, but Allah prepared him. Allah prepared him. Allah has given him the staff, the stick, and given him miracles, and ability, everything. Even then Allah said, not yet. Why? What more do you need? What more do I need? Allah, uh, Musa Allah says, can you give my brother so it will be easy for me? Allah said, okay, go. Allah made his brother, Nabi as well, go with him. So he can communicate and help you. Even then Allah said, even then Allah said, just by giving him all the assets, that don't forget my dhikr, Musa, you'll be successful. Your sex will happen at that time. I'm giving you the miracles and assistance, but only when you do dhikr there will you be successful. Because fitna is suppressed with what? With nothing else at all. Fitna is suppressed only with dhikrullah, remembrance of Allah. Who doesn't accept this, believe this, then remember this. That this is a warning from the Quran, a warning from Hadith, that never will that person depart this world with the Iman, he will be drowned in the fitnas. This is the day and age of fitna. Dunya, there's not just one fitna. The fitnas are joined together. You cannot differentiate between them today. That what do you think are your desires? What are your desires? Is it just one desire? Every moment a new desire takes birth. Every moment a new desire originates inside the human being. That takes him far from the deen. They are being created. Allah's Nabi some said they intertwined. Just like the straw mat, the straw strands are twisted together, joined together. Today the fitnas are joined together. You cannot be saved. Doesn't matter how hard, how hard you try. Doesn't matter. This is Allah's karam and the grace of the Prophet وسلم, and Allah's grace and blessings that they favored us. They favored us and told us the path to success. So this is brothers, if you want to be saved, if you want to save yourself with the man, you want to leave this world, there's only one solution, one method. Do the dhikr of Allah, not tasbih 12 times, do dhikr kathir, Allah Ta'ala says, do dhikr kathir. Be lost in the dhikr of Allah, immersed in the dhikr of Allah, drowned in the dhikr of Allah. Not this, oh, do a little bit of dhikr, a little bit of tasbih, this and that. No, this dhikr will not succeed. Wadhkurullah kathir, Allah lakum tuflihun. Success, where will you get it? How? Dhikr kathir, you'll be saying, why? Because dhikr of Allah, remember, will say from the fitnas, otherwise no human being can prove that he's saved from fitnas. He'll hide them in his heart. He'll hide his sins. He'll be the mound, the fountain of sins who doesn't do dhikr of Allah. In that way that Allah Ta'ala is defined. You, Allah says, cannot do about that the way you want. Step by step, you have to follow the principles, the usuls, the manners of the Quran and the hadith. That's what we have to do. Allah didn't have a need to tell us to do his dhikr. Why did he give us timing? Why did Allah give us a schedule of dhikr? Why did he tell us when to do dhikr? Why did Allah Ta'ala explain to us, do this much dhikr, do it this way, morning, do it in the evening, do it this time? Why? Why has Allah prescribed us a schedule? Because the benefit was for us, so that every moment, Allah said, this moment, this fitna could occur. Allah knows everything. He's the creator. He, for that reason, gave us, in accordance to the issues, the dhikr of Allah. And it's lazim, essential morning and evening to do dhikr Subihu, bukratu, wasila. It's lazim. Allah knows best that the morning which fitna has descended, and in the evening which fitna descends. For protecting us from that, let's just go, and go along with dhikr of Allah. When you get up, do dhikr of Allah. When you depart in the night, do dhikr of Allah. But there's no dhikr in our lives. There's no dhikr. Fitna upon fitna upon fitna in our lives. Full up the whole. Houses are full of fitnas. Houses are full of fitnas. Mad is the dunya. No one ask how mad we are in the dunya. We have um, uh, mental issues, physical issues, mental diseases, physical diseases, dunya upon dunya, distress, sorrow, sadness, difficulties. Mu'min? How can a mu'min be connected to uh, fear? La khawfun alayhim wa la hum yahzanun, Allah says. A mu'min, a believer, 
that there's no one who has more sadness than a mu'min, and there's no one more than a mu'min who is detached from sadness. Both in parallel at the same time. How can they be both the same? Yes, both things are, go hand in hand. Both things go hand in hand. They're joined together, combined. A mu'min, there's no one more than a mu'min who is sadness, and no one more than a mu'min who is detached. So there's no one more sad than a mu'min, no one more happy than... How can a mu'min be sad? He's sad with regards to the hereafter. Concerned. Fikri akhira. Concerned. He's drowning in his concern. Allah want a good hereafter. And how is he enjoying and happy? That he has no worries in the world. He has no sadness in the dunya. So both things are there together in parallel. You understand what I'm saying? This fakir's words? Do you understand what this fakir's Good point, eh? That I've just said. MashaAllah. Subhanallah. So will we practice on this? You want to be safe from fitnas? It's your choice. Are you doing dhikr for me? Allah says, Allah says, do dhikr for me or are you doing it for yourself? Dhikr you're doing for your own benefit. To protect yourself. This is security. Dhikr is security. It's a protection. It's a protection. So much Allah Ta'ala has given us a great tool and asset that there nothing can compare to Allah's remembrance. Nothing. So brothers, colleagues, Allah Ta'ala's dhikr, do it. And the reason? Doing dhikr Allah will protect you, will protect your heart. And fitna won't come. And secondly, secondly what will occur? Secondly, will occur that when you do dhikr of Allah, your heart will be formed, improved, fitna will not come inside, not penetrate. Then what will happen after? Allah's love, the signs of Allah's love will come to your love. Now, let me explain to you something in passing here. One example I'll give to you first. You understand what is fitna, isn't it? Darkness, vice, wrongdoing, issues, challenges. So let's say you're on a journey. Now. I'll give you an example. Long journey, eight hours long journey. And the route is very weird and you don't even know the route and it's a dangerous route and you might get lost. You don't want to drop into the ditches and uh, fall off the side and it's an important trip you need to go on this. And it's more than important than your life that you get to that destination. You need to go on that trip. So you say, how will I get through this eight hours? Don't even know the route properly. How will I travel? How will I arrive there? You're extremely sad and a person comes to you. A person comes to you and says, why are you distressed, upset? He says, Yaar, what shall I do? I'm very upset and sad. He says, tell me the reason. Tell me the reason. He says, I need to arrive. I uh, need to travel for eight hours. I'm going to get very late. I don't even know the way. And I heard the route is very dangerous. There's hazards and barriers. How will I get there? He says, how long is it? He said, eight hours long, the, the, the travel. He said, no problem. He said, I've already traveled on that route. I know that route. So I'll give you the method. Shall I give you a shortcut on that route? And then you'll be happy, isn't it, at that time? That I'm just giving you the translation so you understand for yourself. You're looking at me. And you'll get lost a bit in what he's saying. He says, Ya. Oh. He says, so you'll submit yourself to that person. You say, that twice I've already gone on that journey. And you said, how long is eight hours? Shall I tell you a way that you can get there in 15 minutes? 15 minutes? You say, yeah, from the car, from a plane? He said, no, from a car. I know, great shortcut to get them 15 minutes. Then you will just turn around 360 degrees in happiness. You say, Baisab, what's your name? You'll ask the name from that person as well. Not just look at him. You'll ask his name. Say, subhanallah. So, insan, you know insan, the human being, 480 years, 480 years were such that the no prophet came to mankind. No prophet came for 480 years. As Isa alayhi salam came after 600 years, about 600 years. After that came the gap, 400 years, no Nabi came. And the, that era was totally empty. And insaniate human beings totally Scattered because it takes minutes for shaitan to deviate people. If three weeks I don't come to dhikr, then everyone's condition will be changed, impacted. That's why Sobhadi Shaykh is very essential. The people's situation and condition changes. That's why Allah Ta'ala continued to send his Nabis. One Prophet came, then the next Prophet came, then the next Prophet came. One thousand years gap between Musa uh, Musa and Isa. Isa. How many Prophets in between Allah Ta'ala sent? Tell me. So 400 years then passed, approximately, exactly I don't know the figure, 
in which no Nabi came. Tell me what will be the hal of that era, of that time? What was the hal of that era? That when the Holy Prophet ﷺ came, the people are worshipping idols, someone worshipping a snake, someone's worshipping Prophet, someone's making the Prophet uh, the God. How a severe, dark era that was that humanity had finished at that time. People had lost themselves, they'd been lost. Totally lost. There was no path, no solution, no light was visible. People didn't know who was God, who was their creator. Someone worshipped an idol, someone threw something. It was all God. The house of Allah that was made for worship, people had put idols inside that house. Such a dark and severe time uh, of, of loss and people were lost in the wilderness. Remember that example? So remember, there's a person, I said to you in the beginning, the person who has to go on a journey. And what's that destination? To arrive to Allah. Yes, as Adam alayhi salam, when he came to earth, then our destinations get to Allah. And where did the person get, come off track and become astray? Who became the God? Think for yourself. You know the answer to this. So Allah Ta'ala's mercy and grace came. Allah Ta'ala sent someone to formulate the path and show the path. Say subhanallah. Subhanallah. Twelfth Rabiul Awwal, Allah Ta'ala on the 12th of Rabiul Awwal, in Makkah al mukarrama in the home of Abu Talib, at the time of Sub Sadiq, Subhanallah, his final Nabi was sent. Umar ibn al As, his wife said that I was there when the Prophet was born. And when the Prophet ﷺ was born, she said that I saw the whole noor, uh, room was full of noor, light. And his respected mother said, that I saw so much light was there at the time of the birth, that between Sham and Basra, between Syria and Basra, I just saw palaces across. The whole dunya was full of noor at that time. And those that were made uh, gods uh, from out of idols, they started to drop. Those who worshipped the fires, the fires were extinguished. And a great storm grew across the world. Such a noor came. Such a light came. She said that when the birth took place, it was like from the heavens, the stars were descending towards the earth, the glow. The sparkle and fell like they were going to drop onto the earth. In Saniyat, humanity, across the whole world, the universe was waiting for that birth of the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. The 400 years, there was this darkness and total loss. So how Allah made the world illuminated, the whole universe, even the moon got the light from the Prophet, even the sun got the flight, even the stars became stars at that time, even the beautiful fountains became such when the nur of the Prophet ﷺ came. So, so what happened at that time? The Haq came, right? Goodness came and Batil disappeared. Batil disappeared at that time. So this was that Noor, this was that Hidayah, the path of Hidayah. Who was explaining this? Allah sent His final Prophet. And whose path, to which path would He direct the people? What did He advise? Subhanallah, the Holy Prophet went on to the top of the mountain and called out. The message of the oneness of Allah, He gave two groups from one, those who believe, and the other, those who didn't believe. One was those who believed, who accepted the Prophet's words, and the other, who didn't believe, who didn't want to believe. And those who believed, Alhamdulillah, those who believed, they, an objective, a mission of life came to them, a path came to them, because they had believed in Allah. And they understood that our objective of life is we need to get close to Allah. We need to get near to Allah. We need to reach Allah. And those who didn't believe, they went into the darkness. They were finished. They have no hisab, no accounting. No accounting. So those who believe now, who believe that Alhamdulillah, we all are those who believe. We are those people who believed. So in front of us, an objective has arrived, a mission, a purpose. And what is that? Allah's Nabi Sallallahu has told us, what is that purpose? To achieve Allah's pleasure. You've come into this world that you need to make the connection with Allah. That's why you're in this world. Allah's irfan, his marifa, his nainis, that's your duty. You have no other duty. Those who believe, they accepted this. Those who believed in Allah, they said, yes, we accept this mission, this purpose. So then the next question arises, listen to this now. 
the example that I gave to you. That we, we are like that human being, similar, who wants to go on a journey. I gave the example, isn't it, that long journey. And the, the journey is not easy. To get to the end is difficult. There are ditches on the way, and drops on the way, and barriers on the way, and nafs and shaitan, thousands of barriers on the way. Our destination is Allah. And we are stood in the beginning of the journey. How do we arrive to Allah? Do you understand now? you understand? Or you don't understand what I'm saying? If you have understood, then put your hand up. MashaAllah. So do you understand? So we are that individual who stood there, ready to go on that journey. Thousands of barriers on the way. Our objective is Allah. And the path is very dangerous indeed. And life is short. Very short life. And the path to arrive to Allah is, is difficult. How do we get there? What do we do? The car can't take us there. I'm stood there, you're stood there, yard. How quickly can we get to Allah? And it's very difficult, but it's necessary. If we don't find Allah's nearness, then we'll be destroyed, we're going to hellfire. And we are stood there distressed like that man who's about to go on the journey, that long journey. Then one human being comes and he explains to us, Alhamdulillah, that I'll deliver you to the destination who came to us, Allah's Rasul Wasallam came to us, the Prophet of Allah. The guide, the, why are you scared? Why are you afraid? Why are you afraid? Why do you get, why are you scared of nafs and shaitan? I will tell you, said the Prophet, I'll tell you the path to get to the end point, to the destiny. Allah's Nabi says, say subhanallah. If only you understand what I'm saying, if only you understand what I'm saying. Very, very important message I'm giving to you. Very important. Allah's Nabi says, why are you scared? Why are you afraid? Why are you cautious? Because we want to get to Allah, otherwise we'll be destroyed. It's hard the journey to get to Allah. How should we do it? How should we get there? We don't know what ibadah should we do. Shaitan will grab us, he will surround us. There are thousands of storms against us. We don't know if ibadah is accepted. Is our Quran getting accepted? Our nafs, our desires, they are attacking us. We are lost. How will we arrive to Allah? Subhanallah. Rahmatullah. He said, I'll tell you. The Prophet said, I'll tell you the path to get to Allah. Why are you afraid? If you want to get to Allah, Yes, we want to get to Allah. That's why we're created. Allah sent us to the world. We pray, Salah, we fast. Nafsani, desires come in between. We don't know if our deeds are accepted or not. How do we get to our destination? Allah's name is. And we don't want to go empty-handed. We want to succeed. Allah's Nabi Sallam said, how quickly do you want to get there? We want to get to Allah quickly. Rasulullah Sallam said, I'll deliver you in 15 minutes, shall I? 15 minutes? And he said that, didn't he? The guide of the journey. So Allah's Nabi didn't even say 15 minutes. I will deliver you there right now, shall I? Shall I tell you how to get to Allah right now? Immediately? Do you want to get there? Tell me. Are you journeyman or not? Are you stood there not on the journey? Are we waiting for this guidance? That's why we pray Salah. That's why we read Quran. We are all the journeymen. We want to get to Allah. So Allah's Nabi some said to me and you, do you want to get to Allah? Do you want to get to Allah? Allah's name is quickly. Tell me. Yes, we want to, don't we? Then Allah's Nabi some gave the solution to get to Allah immediately. Simple route. Simple route. He said, I'll tell you right now the path. You have no need to worry about concern. Leave all other actions you're doing. فَاتَّبِعُونِ يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهِ Subhanallah. Rasulullah Sallam said, Obey me, follow me, imitate me. Keep following my sunnahs, keep imitating my sunnahs. Don't worry at all. When you imitate me and follow me, you'll become my beloved. You'll become my beloved. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, whoever becomes my beloved, then I grab hold of him and I'll take him with me into paradise. And there Allah's Quran says clearly, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّنُ اللَّهِ فَاتَّبِعُونِ يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهِ That if you want to get near to me, Allah says, Allah is questioning the human beings. What is Allah saying? That you believers, you want to love me. That's why Allah, is, that's why you're trying hard physically, worshipping and praying, all the ibadat I've given to you. That's why you're utilizing as a resource to get near to me, Allah says. Allah says, I'll give you a shuka, Allah says. I'll give you a shuka. Simple method. But I won't tell you, pull, my Prophet Sallallahu will tell you himself. What a beautiful love Allah had with his Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The secret, Allah wanted the secret to be told by his Nabi. Thou my Prophet, I'll enjoy it. When you tell the people, then I'll enjoy it, Allah says. You tell the people, my Prophet. Otherwise, why did Allah have to say, Qul to the Prophet Zama? Allah could have told us himself. Tell me. You tell the people, O Prophet. Qul in kuntum tuhibun Allah. 
The, the Prophet Allah says, you are looking for me, you want to get near to me, you want my happiness, I'll tell you a shulka, Allah says. Simple route, you do the amal, do those actions, then I will make you my beloved, Allah says, you will then become my beloved. That's the condition, and look at the path. So understand this small point, that every sunnah action that's practiced by a human being, he, that human being is the beloved of Allah. One is the ashik Allah, the lover of Allah, there are two ashiks, two lovers. One is the ashik Allah, the person who loves Allah. One is the person who Allah Himself loves that person. The person who wears imam, a turban, the person who wears the sunnah clothing. What are you scared of? You're not scared of nobody. You're not concerned about nobody. لا خوفون عليهم ولا هم يحزنون. No fear, no grief, no concern, no worries. That's it. He's just worried about his work. He's following the deen. Yes, he's just following one path. Always thinking about the friend of Allah. Always thinking about the Prophet of Allah. What a great... Verse that has just come to my mind. They're always thinking about the Prophet ﷺ. Always thinking about Allah. Just following that path. Practicing the deen. They have no need to be worried about anyone. They know that we want to find Allah's nearness. We want to please Allah. And to please Allah we have to imitate Allah's mem- Nabi ﷺ. That's it. Why do you wear the turban? Is it part of the wajib sunnah? Not necessarily. We don't care. We just want to get close to Allah. And Allah is attained through what? Not through drama, not through Quran, not through the Kaaba, not through Medina. Where? No way will you get to Allah. Where will you get this? Through the Sunnah of Rasulullah, you will find Allah. That's it. That's it. The, whoever doesn't believe this, doesn't believe in the Quran. Doesn't believe in the Quran, he's a disbeliever. Simple, straightforward. 100% straightforward Islam. Am I right or wrong? Tell me. You're scared, the thief is that, and they take this is wrong, this is not right. The fakir sits here and says this in the masjid today. That one path only will take you to Allah, not Salah will take you, not Quran will take you, not Hajj will take you. No path of the dunya can take you to Allah. If Allah said, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُونَ اللَّهِ فَاتَّبِعُونِي فَاتَّبِعُونِي يُحْبِبْكُمُ الله. That's it. That's it. Why do you stall and hesitate and question and think about and leave the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ? Why do you stall? Why do you sit on tables and eat? Why do you run towards immodesty, the women? We have done this many hajj, we have done this many umrah, I have kept this many fast. Nothing at all. Not only accepted is one ibadah will be accepted. Only one ibadah will be accepted which is undone according to the sunnah of the Prophet Standing, sitting, eating, walking, traveling. Whatever the Prophet did his lifestyle that's arrived to us, explained to us, what was hidden was hidden. The Prophet even told us his family life. As Aisha said, tell everything. Rasulullah said, Aisha, tell them everything about my life so my ummah can benefit because I'm an example, role model for the people's lives. What excuse do we have now? Uh, can eat like this? This is not necessary. I can wear topi if I want to. No, high level practice. High level love you will get of Allah. High level. Why are you ashamed? What are you scared of? Why are you a thief? Oh, remember this as well. Love you want to Allah is not your control, the human being. We're asking for Allah's love. You are looking for Allah's love. And Allah knows that where is this person, a hypocrite, munafiq, how much shukats he takes in following and loving my Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah says, I know. He knows everything. Where he takes the shortcuts and he doesn't follow and he doesn't practice. How many excuses he says, this is not necessary, I don't need to do this. All the excuses. All of this is delusion, deception my brothers. Deen is straightforward, simple, transparent. That there's nothing that can compare to our deen. Very simple deen. The destination is Allah. Our objective, say subhanAllah. Our objective of life is to find Allah. And how will we get Allah? Via the sunnah of Rasulullah. That's it. And you want to be saved from fitna? Do zikrullah. That's it. Three things we've learned today. What else is there in the deen? What will you become? You become ghawth kutab. You will rise as the ghawth and the kutab. Tell me. Is this hard the deen? Is Islam deen? Everything is hard at that time when you don't want to do it. Then it's difficult. When you don't want to practice, then everything is difficult. But when you want to do something, nothing's difficult. So simple path Islam. Then Asirat al-Muslim, Allah said, there's so many lines he drew in the sand, the Sahaba Akram was sitting, the noble companions were sitting, the Prophet said, this line, that line, this line. Sahaba said, what are these lines? Rasul said, these old lines of shaitan. Shaitan was how the Prophet explained to him, drew physical lines in the sand. And he said that these old paths we made, do this, do this, do this, do this from here, Ashik, this person, do this, take this out, do this march, do this demonstration. 
These are all the lines in the sand. Nothing, no link with the deen. Allah's Nabi said, Hey, Adam as Muslim, he drew one straight line in the sand. What line is that? Atiullah wa atiur Rasul. Obey a line, imitate the Prophet. That's it. Follow this line, adopt this line, and this line, the fitnas will destroy this line, and for, to create ourselves from the fitnas, do dhikrullah. That's it, simple, straightforward deed. You want to find Allah, you want to please Allah, and to please Allah, Nabi Allah Kareem says, you grab hold of his lifestyle, and to be safe from the fitnas, vice, do dhikrullah. Simple, straightforward Islam. Can you believe it? Is it hard? Then start practicing, and mashallah, start practicing. From today, read my kitab, Sunnah, Sunnah Ways, Sunnah Ke Raste, Sunnah Ways, and keep it next to your pillow in your bed. I did what all Allah, made me do such an action, we are not capable, we are not worthy, that, but I have a lot of love for the Sunnahs of your Habib, Allah. please make me do such an action, I asked, Allah subhanahu Allah made me, I don't know how this Hadith Kitab came together, I don't know how. I don't know how we put this together. Such a great, thick kitab it is. Why, thick, lots of pages in it. I didn't even have time. With a unique method this kitab came about. I said to a colleague of mine that I will say the hadith. I will say the hadith when I don't have time. So when we do zikr at that time, one hadith I will say in this style that each, everything you record that you keep on typing on your computer. The whole kitab was made, alhamdulillah. Time, utilize, learn how to utilize the time. Read that book. If you don't get benefit, then tell me children have read this book. Every single hadith is present in that book for life. And any action is not just one hadith. The imama's hadith, we're going to the imama chapter 17, 20, 50 hadith on imama and on sunnah, separate, different separate unique sunnahs. This is ilm. Knowledge is sunnah. We shouldn't look concerned. The, how do you know this? The sunnah, we should try, we should tell our children, do amal on the sunnah. We have no care, no regard about sunnah in our lives. Any fitna comes, we don't care. Doesn't matter what fitna comes, we are worse than the animals, the human beings in the Quran says, that they're worse than the animals. We say, everything, a person when he leaves sunnah, then he's lost. I can't remember that verse in the Quran, that when you tell them the deen, they won't understand, they'll refuse. That such a time will come in a human being's life. Allah says that when you explain to them, they don't want to be explained to. When you show to them, they don't want to be shown. They won't come in the akal, the penny won't drop. Summum bukumun, they'll go worse than that. Then Allah Ta'ala says, they're not animals, they're worse than the animals. That person's become worse than the animals. That insan, human being, that Allah's and Allah's Rasul, some he forgets and doesn't want to know, then he's not affected on his tongue. That what's the value of sunnah? And what is the punishment and loss in following the strange people? What should we do in our life? What's the meaning of life? Where am I going? When should I come? What should I do? How should I live? At that time, he's worse than the animals, that person. He doesn't have a life. He doesn't have an understanding that he can explain to himself. Eating, drinking, sleeping, children, women, everything, nothing else. When married, lust, passion, nothing else in life. Wasting time. No other purpose of life. Three actions do, my friends. Three actions that have been explained to us. That hold on to the sunnah firmly, robustly, alhamdulillah. Grab hold of the sunnah. Firmly. If you want to find Allah, grab hold of the sunnah. And do zikr of Allah. Protect yourself from the fitna. That's it. How should we do zikr? The way I've explained to you, morning and evening. Morning and evening. Which zikr? Yes, Allah says, what's bin nafsikr? Do zikr. That in your heart remember me, Allah says. Remember me. In your heart you should remember me, Allah says. How? That with love, with humility, with silence, remember me, Allah says. Remember me in such a way that the other person shouldn't even know that right, this is like a secret, that you're remembering Allah, the other person doesn't even know. That's how you do the good. When do it? Morning and evening, sit down. This is called maraqaba. Oh, when we do khatam khwajan, this is not dhikr, this is just the beginning. We recite the kalamas and do ithali thawab. The real dhikr is maraqaba, the silent dhikr. That's where you're connecting with Allah. Tabatal alayhi tabtil Allah says. Do this dhikr. Learn this dhikr from a shaykh. Okay. We don't have an initiative. We have no concern, no interest to do. Learn dhikr, my friends, servant of Allah. If you don't learn dhikr, how are you going to do dhikr? Takabur, pride. 
haughtiness, if you don't have that ilm, then learn that ilm. What's wrong with that? What's the problem with that? If you are not, if you are a champion of one school of subject of the infant you've studied, if you don't have this ilm, then learn it from somebody. What will you be under his feet, will you? If you have to learn from him, will you be criticized or looked down upon? You'll be elevated, alhamdulillah, more if you learn from that person. Allah will be happy, look here, to learn my ilm. He's going to different people to learn the knowledge. What did the Sahaba do? You should knock doors. Or did this hadith come to you? Tell me. They'd go and sit there all day long, all night, next to the other companion to learn hadith. That's how the hadith, no one had pride. To learn one hadith, miles and miles of journey. For many miles, no shame, Sahabi companion going, oh, uh, uh, that one knowledge no, uh, today I've got this knowledge I'm more learned I'm not going to go to him I'll be looked down upon people laugh at me that I've gone to learn this is the problem nowadays this is shaitan's deception these are the fitnas of this day and age fitna that person's fall into fitna with regards to the hereafter save yourself Allah's Nabi some, that look at the hadith what Quran was saying the hearts become hard he becomes like an upside down vessel and nothing good affects that person it just leaks out he is not a human being he's an animal that person Allah's dhikr, learn it. Protect yourself. Yes? That, don't you want to be uh, connected to a wali Allah if he gives you chishti, dhikr, usur, wardiya, qadriya? They're all permissible. They're all good. No problem. But if you see I'm not getting the thing that I can get from here, I'm getting something better here. Then you gain something better than that. Then attain that thing that's better than that. If you have been taught by somebody La ilaha illallah and then to be your heart to be taught then the name of Allah, what's wrong with that? That's high class. The name of Allah on your heart. That's high class learning then, isn't it? If you're taught that. He has a Mujaddad al he said that our silsila Naqshbandi starts where the other silsilas end. There's nothing to doubt here. You'll have to accept this. Yes, the Chishtiya, Qadriya, Surabadiya. They come, they are only special people select La ilaha, Durushri, etc. Say Subhanallah. Yes, they don't go beyond that, but our Naqshbandis is like you are very select people, Naqshbandis. In the first day, the heart is alive with the name of Allah. Passionate. First sabak, first lesson a person goes into jazm. When he goes into jazm, Subhanallah, then what does he do? Then he has love for the Prophet, so he's drowned in the love and he starts to follow the Sunnah. Immediate. He picks up the standard, the flag of the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. That's his lifestyle. Yes. So brothers, if you don't have this, let's give you love. Go to the shaykh. Ask him, request him, please teach me the dhikr. Make my heart alive. What's this to be scared about here? Oh, this is shirk, is it? That due to, if you don't learn dhikr due to being scared of people around you, oh, then, then that's like shirk. For example, if you have a shaykh, well, any of you, if you have a teacher already, then it's not mamnu. Mamnoon, it's not forbidden that you go to another shaykh to learn. It's better that that other shaykh will give you higher class dhikr. So if you learn that, you learn this as well. Alhamdulillah, you got both, end of story. Anyway, let's not waste time in life. Death is very speedily running after us. Good words, we don't know how Allah Ta'ala seats us down and listen to such great di- discussion and words. So at least do one of the three things. Shall I repeat again what we need to do? What are the three things? Important learnings. To find Allah, Allah's nearness, that's our destination. Isn't it all of us? That's why we work hard, ibadah, that we all try. Isn't it? Through worship. We want Allah's pleasure, but you can try your best, you won't get Allah like this. How will you find Allah? Say loudly. Through what? Sunnat Rasulullah. Who? Mufti Sahib saying this? Alim Sahib saying this? Sufi Sahib saying this? Who is saying this? Allah is saying this. Allah is saying, Allah has announced in the Quran, Qul, tell them my Prophet wasallam. tell them yourself. Don't be afraid. Allah is saying, you won't find me, Allah says, through any action. How? Everything you will do, if you don't practice the sunnah, you won't find Allah. Impossible. Impossible. If you practice the sunnah, you'll get everything. Flip side. Salah you'll attain, hajj you'll attain, fasting you'll attain, everything you'll attain via sunnah. What a beneficial thing is the sunnah. eh? So our destination, our purpose in life is Allah. To get Allah's pleasure. And how do we get Allah's pleasure? By Sunnah Rasulullah. And how to be safe from fitnas? Dhikrullah. Three things. Wa akhru dawana. And alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Wa sa'adu ushri. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. As-salamu wa salamu wa ala sayyidu al-musayyid. Shabiyyu zunin. Toha yasin. Al-habibu al-amin. Allahumma zanila. Sayyidina wa mawlana wa muhammadin Nabiya wa miji wa zuwaji wa mahatin wa minin Wa zuriyyati wa ilabati Kama zandayta ala awli wa rahimah inna kawmin wa majid Wa 
وسلم تسليما دائما ابدا غزيرا 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 اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا وظلمنا وحزننا وجدنا وخطنا ومدنا كل ذلك عندنا اللهم ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة فقنا عذاب النار فقنا عذاب القبر فقنا عذاب الحشر فقنا عذاب الميزان وادخلنا جنة مع الأبرار يا عزيز يا غفار يا رب العالمين ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين يا مقلب القلوب سم بالقلب يا لا دينك ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الواق اللهم سمتنا للإيمان وأمتنا للإيمان وأشنا يوم القيامة مع الإيمان اللهم إيدنا الصراط المستقيم اللهم إيدنا الصراط المستقيم اللهم إيدنا الصراط المستقيم اللهم استعبنا بسنتي ونفعنا بمحبته وأشنا في زمرته يا كريم اللهم إنا على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك اللهم بارك لنا في الموت وفيما بعد الموت اللهم إنا على غمرات الموت وسكرات الموت اللهم إنا على غمرات الموت وسكرات الموت اللهم حاصبنا عذابا يسيرا اللهم حاصبنا عذابا يسيرا اللهم حاصبنا عذابا يسيرا يا قاضي الهاجات إك حاجاتنا يا دافي البليات إتفا بلياتنا يا شافي الأمراض إشفا مرادنا اللهم عافنا في بدني اللهم عافنا في صمي اللهم عافنا في بصري لا إله إلا أنت ربنا حب لنا من أزواجنا وزرياتنا قوة عين وجعلنا المتقين إماما اللهم دمرهم هما كما رب يعني صغيرا اللهم رمضهم هما كما رب يعني صغيرا اللهم رمضهم هما كما رب يعني صغيرا اللهم اغفر لنا ولوالدينا واستاذينا ومشايخنا وجميع المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الله يهو من اللمبات برحمتك يا رحم الراهمين سبحان ربك رب النزة يما يسفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين